Good morning. It is 5.43 a.m. on Monday, August 6th, 2018. I'm Christiana Ellis and I just got up. This is five more minutes. Uh, I am up earlier than I would have expected, especially given that I didn't exactly go to bed early last night. I just kind of coincidentally woke up uh, and... Uh, I'm going to take that as the gift that it seems to be. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly. I think, you know, we always have our rhythms, and I suspect my body is still kind of a little bit messed up. I mean, I was coming from mountain, the mountain time zone, uh, so uh, my my jet lag, if I had it, would be the other way, but... Anyway, my sleep rhythms are probably still a little messed up, and so even though I came awake naturally, uh, I'm still operating on less total sleep. So, but then I also had just come from vacation, where uh, so it's probably a wash. But uh, hopefully, I can over the next couple of days get my sleep rhythms back under control. Hi, I'm Christiana Ellis. This is five more minutes. Yesterday, I finished playing the main story mission of Ni no Kuni 2, which is a video game. And it is a JRPG that I've been playing for a while. Uh, I think the fact that I've been trying to do all the different side quests uh, contributes to how long it took. And in the scheme of things, compared to JRPGs in general, it wasn't an overlong one. But it was one where the length here and there was fairly padded with some quests that took a lot of time without really being all that interesting. Overall, I think the game is good, but it was padded with some stuff that was mediocre. And, but overall, I think it was really good, and I love the style of it. It's designed to look very much like uh, Studio uh, Ghibli animation, and it was even done in partnership with them. Uh, it's a sequel to another JRPG that was similar, that I liked very much, uh, called Nino Kuni, oddly enough. Um, this one, though, had some interesting elements to it. I don't think I like the story quite as much overall. Um, it's still pretty good, but then it ends on a weird note because uh, the, the plot of this particular story is that you have this young kid who is now the king of this little fantasy realm because, you know, his father, the king, died, and it turns out, oh, no, he didn't just die, he was murdered, it's a coup, you got to go run for your life, and now, ousted from your own kingdom, what are you going to do? Well, he decides, as part of kind of this promise that he made to his, like, his, his, uh, um, nanny, I guess? Uh, he promises that he's going to make a kingdom where there will be no more war. And it's a little bit <laughs> funny that uh, there's an awful lot of fighting involved in building a kingdom where there will be no war. But uh, it <laughs> throughout most of the story, it does a pretty good job of telling a... Uh, you know, it's, it's broad strokes, it's lacking much nuance, but generally telling a story where he is trying to, to build this good, new, peaceful kingdom where, you know, uh, kindness is rewarded and you can express yourself and, and he has to, uh, tr his, the goal for, of how to achieve no more war is essentially to form this alliance with all of the other big nations of the world. And so, therefore, to uh, eliminate war by forging a peace treaty, which is like, yeah, okay, sure. And each of the nations that he has to make peace with have their own sort of illustration of how a leadership can, of a country can go wrong. 
and uh, then at the end you're you're up against the bad guy who is trying to you know trick everybody and all that and and even then it turns it does a little bit of a um, an about face even on the bad guy towards the end where it's like oh you are doing this horrible thing for a reason that came originally from a selfless idea so as long as you promise to stop then we're all just fine and you don't have to face any consequences okay well all right sure but then after all of this whole big story the actual like you know ending epilogue of the story carries it into the future to where instead of it just being a peace treaty for all the major nations it suggests that it's a good thing that his son continues his work until the entire world is united under one banner and it's presented as an unambiguously good thing in the ending but the language that gets used towards the very end there really starts being a little bit more like there's a reason that in a lot of these sorts of stories the that the, the the idea of uniting the entire world under a single banner is usually not a good guy plan. Um it's 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 just this weird nuance of like it's one thing to imagine like the feder you know you know the Star Trek Federation uh you know or just the idea that you could have a single world government and everyone gets along and sure but uh I don't know just used some weird language there at the end that gave me an ooky feeling anyway overall I think that the, the game is uh, very good although now I have the dilemma of I finished the main story but there were a bunch of side quests that I didn't finish but those side quests will actually take a pretty long time and a lot of grinding for limited reward so do I do that just to kind of feel that completion or do I move on to some other game I haven't decided yet. Anyway, I will leave it there for today and I will talk to you all tomorrow for five more minutes.